just with a handful of bolt-on modifications, we can very easily take it to over 500 wheel horsepower. Hey everyone, Jake from 8020 Automotive here. Today we are talking about performance modifications and upgrades for the Audi RS3. The RS3 came with the 2.5 liter TFSI engine, which is known for being extremely tuner friendly. And so fortunately, just with a handful of bolt-on modifications, we can very easily add a ton of power to the RS3 and take it to over 500 wheel horsepower. So first off on this 2.5 liter TFSI, the kicker here is that torque is really the limiting factor on these engines. The safe limit is about 550 wheel torque. Anything above that tends to be what leads to bent rods and internal engine issues. And so ultimately a lot of your horsepower depends on how well you're managing torque, which makes tuning extremely important on these engines. The stock internals are quite strong here. They're able to handle 600 to 650 wheel horsepower. You have a couple other main limiting factors and that's gonna be the turbocharger as well as the fueling system. The factory turbocharger can handle about 550 wheel horsepower on E85 before you need to upgrade to a larger turbocharger. And also around the same time you're upgrading to to a larger turbocharger is when you'll need to start looking at some fueling upgrades to support E85 and additional fueling needs. So when we look at the safe limits of this engine, like I mentioned, 550 wheel torque is about the max that we'll want to go to. You'll ideally want to keep that more in the 500 to 525 range. And with respect to wheel horsepower, that should put you somewhere in the 500 to 550 wheel horsepower range. You can have 600 plus wheel horsepower and still limit your torque, but that's going to require turbo charger and fueling upgrades and this engine can push the limits of what it's capable with on the factory turbocharger so unless you're planning on doing internal upgrades to address the rods and the pistons it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense in my opinion to go ahead and push into upgraded turbocharger territory so with that being said we're going to go ahead and walk through the list of modifications here that can get you right in that 5 to 550 wheel horsepower range while keeping torque below 550 wheel torque the first mod, which is going to be the biggest bang for the buck here, is of course engine tuning. Tuning is what's going to add your big power gains and really optimize the efficiency of the engine. And it does so by turning up the boost levels. Like I mentioned though, tuning is extremely important here because we have a torque limitation. And so you want to make sure you're working with a reputable tuner or a reputable tuning software or off the shelf tuner to make sure that you're not pushing yourself beyond the safe limits of this engine. Tuning is going to be the base that we're gonna go ahead and build off of. And so all these other modifications on this list are really to support tuning and support the higher boost levels that we're running to make sure that the turbocharger is taken care of. That brings us to the second thing on our list. I'm gonna put an intercooler as the second thing because the factory intercooler on the 2.5 liter RS3 is abysmal and is very small, even in stock form. So once we go ahead and throw you know, tuning on there and turn up the boost levels. We're producing a lot more heat from the turbocharger and ultimately that leads to a lot higher of air temperatures. And ultimately that means we need a larger intercooler to be able to sufficiently cool all of the hot air that the turbocharger is producing. And so a larger upgraded intercooler is gonna be one of the best modifications that you can do, not only for consistent performance and to prevent issues like heat soak and things like that, but also from a reliability standpoint because heat is the killer of of turbochargers and the killer of engines. You will get some power gains and some performance benefits from an intercooler, but it's also most important just from a reliability standpoint. So once you've got the intercooler out of the way, the third modification that I'm gonna discuss here is an upgraded intake. Now an intake isn't gonna give you the biggest of power gains, but it's gonna help bring more air into the engine and to the turbocharger, which just takes a little bit of stress off of the turbocharger and helps it do its job a bit more efficiently. You're also gonna get faster turbo spool, better throttle response, and a number of other benefits that make an intake totally worth it. After an intake, fourth on our list is going to be downpipes. Now you can go catless downpipes, which of course from an emission standpoint is the question mark, or you could go with high flow catted downpipes. But downpipe upgrades are where you're going to see some of your biggest performance gains from bolt-on modifications. And that's because 
the catalytic converter sits in the downpipe and that creates a lot of back pressure up against the turbo. And so that back pressure works against the turbocharger. It slows down turbo spool and requires the turbocharger to work even harder to hit those higher boost levels that we're trying to get with our tuning. By upgrading the downpipe either to a high flow or a catless downpipe, we are reducing a ton of back pressure within the exhaust system, which allows the turbocharger to spool more freely, to spool faster, to produce less heat and ultimately to produce a lot more power. So downpipes are probably the biggest power gain on our list from other supporting bolt-on mods after tuning. Also again from both a performance and from a reliability standpoint because we're taking stress and heat away from the turbocharger. And then the fifth modification on our list is going to be the turbo inlet. The turbo inlet is also very restrictive from the factory so by upgrading the inlet we can free up airflow and add a bit more of additional power as well. So those are really the five bolt-on modifications to talk about here. Depending on your tuning, those will get you up to about the 500 wheel horsepower mark. So the question is, how do we go from 500 to 550? And the answer there is with fueling and more specifically with E85 fueling. E85 is where you'll be able to push right up against kind of the boundaries of the factory turbocharger and the factory fueling system. And the good thing is you don't need any upgrades to run E85, you just need to make sure that your tuning is capable of handling it and that you're tuned for E85. This is a simple, basically free modification that adds a lot of additional power. E85 is cheaper. You do get worse fuel economy on it, but it's fantastic from a power standpoint and has a number of other benefits that come with it. So E85 fueling is definitely something to look into and it's what will really push you up to the maximum limit of this engine, both from an internal standpoint, but also with respect to the turbocharger and the fueling system. So that's really the safe spot to live is, you know, 500 to 550 wheel horsepower, and then approximately 500 wheel torque. At those levels, you've got a decent bit of reliability. You're not looking at bending any rods or running into internal engine issues. And you also don't need to look at fueling upgrades or turbocharger upgrades. And so you can do all the modifications on this list very cost effectively and ultimately add a ton of power to your RS3. That's it for our video on RS3 performance modifications. If you guys appreciate this content, please click that like button, subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for all our future content.